Church and today we would like to speak about the favorite Sun movie that premiered last week on BET+. The movie is about a story of two brothers who are in a gospel group and who are struggling to find the balance between faith, love and religion while being under uh, the constant surveillance and control of their strict uh, father, a reverend of a mega church. If you haven't watched the movie, it's okay. Um, this video is still going to help you to, um, to get some knowledge and some insight about the principles of the kingdom of God. And if you have already watched the movie, that's also wonderful. Um, but we're going to spoil you. <laughs> But um, this video is going to help you to um, notice specific things that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, put on in our heart to share with you principles of the Kingdom of God that need to be revealed. And maybe you already noticed them yourself, but um, today we want to take the time to go through them uh, together. First of all, it's important to know that we are children of God. We are children of God by Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. So out of this perspective, we are going to view and um, talk about this movie. Um, as children of God, we live in a kingdom, the kingdom of God. And um, this world is, all, is also a kingdom. It's a kingdom of Satan, because Satan is the ruler of this, uh, of this world system. But we as children of God, we belong to the system and the world of Jesus Christ. And in his kingdom, there is a king who is Jesus Christ himself. There is a royal family who we are as his children, and there is a kingdom. This kingdom is not a place or a country. It's more like a network of principles that guide this country and these principles are important for us because these principles are the way um, we are supposed to live and represent Christ on this earth. Um, praise the Lord Jesus Christ was on this earth and he lived by these principles and showed us how to do it according to his will and according to his standards. So um, for instance when we talk about the concept of love in the kingdom of God, there is an understanding of love, what love really is. In the kingdom of God, love is God, and God is eternal. He is constant, and nothing you can do can change him. So that's why this love is unconditional. It doesn't depend on conditions. But when we look at the love in this world, we see a love that is fragile. We see a love that is changeable. We see a love that has to be earned, and a love that can fade away with time. So um, that's how you see the difference between love in the kingdom on this, of this world and love in the kingdom of uh, Jesus Christ. So according to this kingdom principles, we are going to view and talk about um, this movie. So let's get into it. One of the things we want to point out today is how important it is to be led by the Holy Spirit in every aspect of our lives. Yes, I said in every aspect of our lives because Christ wants to be seen in our whole life, not only in some parts, for example, in your job or in your love life. He wants to be seen in every part of our life because he actually died for our whole life. We are in this world, but not from this world. We belong to a holy and wonderful kingdom, just like my sister already said. The Bible says that we are strangers to this world and citizens of heaven. We as children of God need to be taught how to live in this world like a citizen of heaven. All the principles and ways of Christ, how he sees things, what he loves, what he hates, how he wants us, his children to live. All of this we need to be taught because this world actually don't teach us how to live in Christ because this world is the complete opposite of the word of Christ. So we need to be taught a lot. We need a holy teacher. We need a perfect teacher. We need God himself. And that's actually the Holy Spirit because it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Christ said that the Holy Spirit is our helper and that he would teach us all the things that he himself, Christ said. So what he's basically trying to tell us is that without the Holy Spirit, we will not be able to know Christ and his ways of life. John 16, 13, Christ says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he will guide us into all the truth. And we need this guidance. We need the Holy Spirit. In this movie, you could clearly see that no one was led by the Holy Spirit. The father was leading the children 
instead of the Holy Spirit leading him as a father and his whole family. Camden was led by his own desire because all his life he wanted to do music. He was not led by the Holy Spirit. He did not even ask the Holy Spirit if he should do it or not. Because actually it's the Holy Spirit who should lead us and help us with all the decision. Whether we should go or not. Whether we should be the light in the dark place or not. It's not our own desire that should bring us into different places. Kempton was led by his own desire because all his life he wanted to do music. He was not led by the Holy Spirit because he actually should have asked the Holy Spirit if he should go or not. And the same thing is with his ex-girlfriend. His ex-girlfriend was not led by the Holy Spirit. She was led by emotions, by lust. She wanted to feel like a woman and that's why she fall into temptation. And the Holy Spirit would never lead us to sin. The Holy Spirit always lead us to Christ. Amen. And the same thing is with the brother of Campton. He was not led by the Holy Spirit to be a pastor. He was led by his father. And such a position like a pastor, this is something so, so important for the whole kingdom of God that especially something like this, you should be led by the Holy Spirit Amen. and not by man and not by flesh. Yes. And the list goes on and on. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling. He's a person. It's not about feeling him, it's about knowing him, truly knowing him. And we want to encourage all of you guys to be led by the Holy Spirit. So you can really, really, really live the life that Christ died for you to live. The Bible is clear in what we should seek first. In Matthew 6.33 is written, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things shall be added unto you. This verse tells us to seek His will and not our own desire. And it also tells us that we should seek the righteousness of God and not what we call good, because we don't even know what's good. In this movie and also in reality, people often believe that their talent equals the will of God. So that's really dangerous, because when we focus too much on our talent, people will praise and not God. For example, David in the Bible was a great singer, but the will of God was for him to become a king and not a singer. And he was, all, he was only able to become a king with the strength of God. Every step that he made was led by the Holy Spirit and with God. The Bible often says in our weaknesses, God shows his strength. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where Paul said, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This verse says that Paul glorifies God in his weakness, because he knows that in his weakness, God can be shown. His power can be shown when he's weak. Paul is a former Pharisee with a huge knowledge in the Jewish law, was sent to the Gentiles. And Peter, who was a fisherman and unlearned, was sent to the Jewish people. So you can see that God's ways are not the way of men. As a human, I would have sent Paul to the, to the Pharisees, to the, to the Jewish people, and Peter I would have sent to the unlearned people, because that makes sense. However, Jesus can use your talents to glorify himself. But first of all, you have to surrender all you have in yourself to him and seek him first. And he will tell you what to do with, with the talents. He will use the talents for himself. First of all, our will is to be a child of God, to have a relationship with Jesus Christ and not to seek after what to do for Christ. And we know that sounds funny because a lot of people say, I'm seeking God. I want to do many things for God. I want to be used by God. But their whole attention is just based on what they can do for God. They lose focus on what Christ did for themselves. And we are supposed to enjoy our relationship with God. We are supposed to focus on what he did for us on the cross and not be focused on what we are going to do for him. Mm -hmm. Of course, Christ wants us to work for him, but that's not the, that's not the focus of our life. Mm -hmm. The focus of our life is Christ and what he did for us. And you have to be honest to yourself if it's really God's really seeking or if you're seeking your own desires, for example, because it's 
it's fun or you're talented in it or you receive a lot of money you should not be motivated by flesh but motivated by the spirit of god all of us know the sentence pursuit of happiness but we as children of god should understand that it's evil because it's evil to pursue what makes you happy because without christ you can never be happy you can never be fulfilled but if you pursue christ in in christ you will find everything you will find the happiness and the fulfillment you're trying to find in the world many layers of lust. We see lust on the level of people who are single, we see lust in the people who are in relationships, we see lust in people who are married. Um, what we see is that um, people who profess to be children of God are actually led by the flesh, they're not led by Christ, they're led by their own desires, they're led by their five senses. Um, we see a playboy who wants to um, have sex with women and is all, always obsessed with them. He's not looking after Christ, he's seeking the flesh, he's seeking human beings. We see um, a, a woman who is actually a virgin and wants to save herself because of Christ, but actually she is, she is in need, she is unfulfilled, she is in lack, and she looks like someone who's actually in pain. She does not enjoy her, 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 um, her title as child of God. Then we see marriages who are, that are almost falling apart, people who are cheating towards each other, a pastor who is cheating, is cheating on his wife. We see a gospel singer or a musician who is also cheating on her husband with other people, with other uh, musicians. And we, in all these examples we see people, individuals who profess to be children of God but actually their lives, their decisions are not of Christ. Christ told us that we are no longer slaves of sin but we are now servants of righteousness. We are no longer enslaved by our sin, we are no longer um, victims of our own body, we are no longer victims of our five senses. But we see that in the movie that so many people are enslaved by their emotions, they are enslaved by their body and enslaved by uh, their five senses. When the five senses say uh, do this, they do it. When the five senses says don't, don't do that, they don't do it. They are only led by, um, by the flesh and not led by Christ. Because we are children of God, we now have the authority and power to live as children of God. We, have, um, we are no longer forced to be slaves. We are now free from the sin. We are free from our past life. But we need to renew our mind to live in this um, to live in this relationship. We need to renew our mind to um, to actually be child of the children of God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Because if we don't allow ourselves to be guided by the Holy Spirit, we will gui we, we will be guided by our own desires and our own flesh. A man of God is supposed to be a person who is in control of situations, who is in control of his body and who is in control of, he, of his emotions. Not because of his own power, but because of the power of Christ that lives in him. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that the same power who rose Christ from the dead lives in us. So we are supposed to be able to tell our body, to, to command our body to stop or to tell our body to do this or that. But we see people in this movie who are victims mm -hmm. and not warriors in Christ. Also concerning the woman, if we look at Dawn, um, Dawn said she wants to be a woman, she wants to feel like a woman, she wants to uh, be seen as a woman, but does she actually know what it means to be a woman of God? Being a woman of God being means being aware of that you are now a daughter of the Most High King, that you are a princess of Christ, that you are fulfilled, that you are renewed, that, that, um, that that you have a new life, that new life is full of Christ, it's, it doesn't have any lack, there is no, there is no poverty in this, in this life, there is no lack in this life, there is complete fulfillment because Christ fulfills your whole life, he fulfills your whole flesh and all your desires, but she's not walking around like a princess who knows her identity, she's walking around, around like a slave, a slave who is enslaved to her own emotions and to um, what the world says what a woman is supposed to be. The concept of dating in the kingdom of God is actually not existent. 
God wants us to be led by Him when we go into relationships. And why is that? Jesus Christ has made a person for you. He has someone for you that He created with you. He has a perfect plan and will for your life because He is the owner of your life. But if you don't see Christ first, you will not be able to see this plan. You will not be able, uh, able to um, to know this plan. You will only see your own vision. You always see your only see your own plans. So we have to see Christ first to know what Christ wants from us and to know where Christ wants us to be and with whom He wants us to be. If we don't see Christ, we will seek our own desires and we will end up with the person Jesus never wanted in our life. So marriage should be joined together by Christ, not approved by Christ, because a lot of people say, okay, God, this is the person I want to marry, now bless it. But that's seeking approval of Christ. But we don't want the approval of Christ, we want the, the leading of Christ, we want the will of Christ, we want Christ in every step of, in every step of um, our marriage, our, our union. So if, rela if a relationship, if Christ brings two people together, the way they were brought together will also be seen in their marriage. Their marriage will be full of Christ. Their marriage will represent Christ. It will not represent themselves because they were not brought by the flesh together. So that's why they will not live as the flesh together. They will live in Christ together. Mm -hmm. And in that relationship, in that marriage, there will be no cheating. There will, not, no, there will be no adultery. There will not, not be unfaithfulness or un unforgiveness. All those things will not have any space in that marriage because that marriage is ordained by God. That marriage is also led by Jesus Christ. What we have said to this point is just to give your whole life to Jesus Christ. Give your body to Jesus Christ because your body is not no longer your own. The Bible says that your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you're not no longer the owner of your body. You don't have the right to use your body like you wish. He died for that body so that body is his own. The Bible says that after all he has done for us, after his death, after his punishment, the least we can do is present our own bodies as a living sacrifice. And we ask you, are you giving your body as a living sacrifice? Do we see in this movie people who give their body as a living sacrifice to Christ? Or do we see people who seek their own desires and their own will? Also, when we look at Dawn's character, we see that uh, if living for Christ as as if as a woman living for Christ looks like that how she portrayed it as being uh, unfulfilled being needy being in struggle then who wants to be a woman of God who wants to be a, a who wants to be a daughter of the Most High King so that's why it's upset that the way um, the, the image of a woman of Christ was portrayed was so uh, was so um, actually so terrible because that's not the way we as women of God live. That's not the way we we uh, we live in Christ. We live in fulfillment. We live in joy, in unspeakable joy. We live because because we have been accepted by Christ. We no longer seek attention of human beings. We we have been we have been seen by God, and that's our appreciation. That's that's our joy. That's our eternal joy. find hypocrisy in, for example, in the church, in the family, in the friendship and in the relationships. People act as if they're seeking God, so but in reality they're seeking their own will and their own desires. So with their mouth they say they want God's will, but with their heart they want the world. They can deceive themselves and they can also deceive other people, but they can't deceive God. And their action and their decision prove all that. We could clearly see this in the family. Because the family is actually saying that they're family in Christ, but their actions are not Christ at all. There's a lot of lying, a lot of unforgiveness, a lot of lust, a lot of flesh, and not Christ. Because Christ told us that we should love each other, we should love our brothers and sisters, we should encourage each other in Christ, we should help each other to be more like Christ, to see Christ. And these are all things that we could not see in the family.
this movie a movie that um, tries to portray everyday life in the church we, tr uh, we see a movie that tries to portray how uh, the life of a church family or a pastor's family is and it's so sad that oftentimes in Hollywood or in movies churches and families and Christ are always portrayed in such an uh, al al almost always portrayed in such an evil manner um, we don't know why that is the case. We assume that the case is because the world wants to uh, wants to make fun of Jesus. The world wants to tell you that you don't need Jesus because you already have enough of drama in your life. So you don't need that Jesus drama in your life also. No? And um, it's sad that we are, that we as children of God we, should, we are supposed to promote movies that promote the kingdom of God. We are supposed to promote movies that really show us how to live in christ because you don't know you don't need to show me how to be be a child of this world you don't need to show me how to be a liar you don't need to show me how to be a cheater you don't need to show me how to be a hypocrite because i know how that is because i, I have lived in the world we all live in this world but show me something different show me how it is to live in christ okay. show me how it is to be led by the holy spirit to Please. take to take decisions in Christ. Show me that because I don't see that when I see that in my school and in the university. I don't see that at work. And it's so unfortunate that people take, put so much money in these movies, but in the end, these movies they don't glorify Christ. They only glorify the world. They only glorify flesh. And what's the matter of of saying that? Oh, in the movie, all the people were so beautiful. Or in the movie, all the people were black. Uh, thank God black people were represented, but is it about Christ or not? Is Christ represented or not? We don't need black people to re be represented. We don't need uh, beautiful people to be uh, represented. We need children of God to be represented. Amen. That's what the world needs. The world does not need another idol. The world needs Christ. And movies are supposed to, mo Christian movies, movies who are professing to be of Christ should uh, present that aspect of Christ should represent the kingdom. So we hope that in the future that um, that we decide we as uh, children of God decide to promote these, uh, these kinds of movies. movies and also decide to join these kinds of movies mm -hmm. because it's said that when we when we see such a movie that we want, why do you want to be a part of such an evil movie? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to be part of such an evil message? Why do you want to be part of such a message that that uh, drags the church down, that that drags the image of Christ down? Why not being part of something that glorifies Christ? Amen. You know, so we have to be led by the Holy Spirit where to act. You know, if we are act, if we are actors of ch as children of God, it's okay. You can be an actor as children as a child of God, but be led by the Holy Spirit where to act. You now be led by the Holy Spirit where and which movie to play in. No, don't be led by uh, the money you get, don't be led by the people you're going to work with, don't be led by the people who are, who are all going to see the movie, because in the end, we are going to stand before Christ. We are going to stand before people, we are going to stay before Christ, and He will He will ask you if you are from of Him or not. So our video is coming to an end, and some of you might be thinking, wow, this video was full of judgment and condemnation. So are we actually judging this movie and its plot? Yes, we are, because the Bible calls us to judge everything and to keep the good. We are called to call out the darkness because we are the light of the world. We are supposed to expose evil and that's what we do. We expose evil and reveal the light. We reveal the kingdom of God and that's what we did in this video. So we hope this video helped you to understand the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ a little bit more. We encourage you to go with everything that we said to the Holy Spirit yes. and to prove it for yourself. Yeah. Um, we encourage you to take your Bible and to read about the kingdom of Christ and to see the difference about his kingdom and the kingdom of this world. We encourage you to have a relationship with Christ, to love this relationship with Christ. The goal of this video is to bring you closer to Christ, to his truth, to his love, to his grace. To all his way, ways we don't want um children of god to live like children of this world because it's so sad our great great father died for everything he, he did such a big sacrifice not for us to live in unforgiveness to live in lust to live in cheating to live in lying and all of these things 
the fruits of the spirit are so wonderful they're so great and we want all of you to live in the spirit because we actually the fruits of the spirit we all have it in, in us and we should live it out we should live the christ out and um yes this is the message of this video we hope you enjoyed the, the video if you have questions you can ask us if you have anything to say you can write it out in the comments and we'll read it and we'll answer you and yes we hope that um you have a wonderful and blessed day in christ and remain in his love for you amen amen bye, bye. <laughs>